Hello, this is Steve at Hydrogen for Health. Welcome back for the third video in this series. Today we're going to do another experiment comparing Brown's gas generated from a PEM electrolyzer and Brown's gas generated from an alkaline electrolyzer. And we've jumped over to the Eagle Research website where the inventor of electrically expanded water explains what Brown's gas is. And I want to read a, a few lines here from this web page and then there's a video that I want to show you before we start our experiment. Okay, let's take a look here. It says that right here, the difference between traditional Brown's gas electrolyzer is a membrane in the solution between the cathode and the anode. The membrane traditionally separates the hydrogen and oxygen into two separate streams. And this is correct. In a PIM electrolyzer, you're going to have a membrane in between that separates the oxygen to one side and the hydrogen to the other side. In an alkaline electrolyzer, they're going to be mixed together. Brown's gas electrolyzers do not have a membrane, so all gases generated come out of the same hose. That's the claim. And what we're trying to do in this series of videos is we're trying to demonstrate that Brown's gas created from a PEM electrolyzer is the same gas that's generated from an alkaline electrolyzer. Um, let's read this. Because no membrane interrupts the process, the BG electrolysis can make a third gas, negatively charged plasma form of water, called electrically expanded water. Let's move down to here. There's one line down here that I want to read. So it's saying that only alkaline electrolysis can create this, ex this electrically expanded water. And right here on this line it says, EXW, electrically expanded water, gives Brown's gas unique properties associated with extra electrons, like voltage generation. It's saying that EXW in the Brown's gas has a unique property of generating a voltage from its extra electrons. So basically what it's saying is if VXW can only be made in a alkaline electrolyzer, then a PIM electrolyzer wouldn't have this electrically expanded water and wouldn't be able to have unique properties associated with extra electrons. So let's take a look at this video. Uh, this is an old video and this is a demonstration of how EXW is generating extra electrons or voltage. All right, today I want to show you something that is really strange that I keep coming across here and I want to try and figure out what the explanation for it is. I've got this piece of stainless steel and it's very thick, especially in the center part where there's no threads. And i got a lead on the outside right around where that center part is. And I'm going to show you something right now. I've got to turn off the camera to light the torch, but I'm going to show you what I've found. Okay, so all I'm going to be doing is putting the flame right into the center part like you see there. The only difference is, since I got that positive lead on the outside of the stainless steel, I'm going to be putting my negative lead right on the tip of my torch. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to try and hold the camera so all you can see is the meter. And one more thing I forgot to mention before I continue this video, uh, I did take that stainless steel piece and insulate it from the any metal around it. I had it on a wooden table the first time we tried this and it was the exact same reading as what you get in the vise. So uh, just in case anybody's wondering that. I showed you where the leads are going and watch this. The jumping that you're seeing is the flame trying to get on a perfect spot. Now I'm pretty close to the center. Okay, so here we go. We're going to try this one time. There you go. As you can see, you get about 1.4 volts. I can't hold it there very long. But uh, for some reason, I'm getting a voltage, DC or AC, it doesn't matter. As long as the positive lead is on the metal and the negative lead is on the tip of the torch, I can create over a volt constantly. Um, and I don't understand why. I thought at first it was something to do with heat. So I wasn't too excited, so I took my acetylene torch, tried the same thing, and I get nothing on the meter. It doesn't jump at all. So it's not just a heat thing. 
Uh, there's something weird about this gas. There must be free electrons flying around that it's grabbing in there or something. I'm not sure. But if anybody's got any clue what this weird anomaly is and why we're able to get over a volt of power just by applying the torch here, if anybody's got any idea, please let me know. I'm very curious. This is one of the neatest things I've seen with HHO yet, and I'd like to understand more about it. I noticed the thicker the metal that I use, the higher the voltage I get. Very, very intrigued by that. Very neat. Anyway, please let me know. Alright, I got some help now so you can actually be able to watch the torch going in and then you'll see the meter. So touch the outside of the steel. Look at that, 1.6, 1.7, 2 volts, that's the highest I've got so far. 1.8, 1.9, look at that man. 1.6 volts, somebody tell me what the hell's going on. So as you can see from the video, and what this statement is saying is that electrically expanded water gives Brown's gas unique properties associated with extra electrons. And you can see how the electrons uh, were being collected and they could be measured on the voltmeter. So if this is true from what this page is saying that you can only make electrically expanded water with an electrolyzer without a membrane, you shouldn't be able to generate any voltage on the voltmeter with a PIM style Brown's gas generator. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to recreate this experiment that was done, ah, I think it was probably done about 12, 13 years ago. And uh, we're going to see what happens. We'll see uh, if, if the gas creates the same type of electron bridge. So let's give it a try. Let's see if the PIM electrolyzer can collect electrons like the alkaline electrolyzer can. All right, we're out here in the lab and I've got the experiment set up. We've got our voltmeter here and our piece of stainless steel tubing like it showed in the video. I also have some propane gas that we're going to use. And what we're going to try and do is see if we can get a voltage reading with each type of gas. We've got the propane gas. We're going to see if we can get a voltage reading with the propane gas. And then we also have the PEM systems here hooked up again. There's four of them there. And then we also have the alkaline system way over there, right there. Pen systems are here, there's four of them. Okay, right here is a flash bath arrestor and a filter that takes moisture out. So let's set up and let's try the propane first. Let's try the propane first. So we'll turn on our voltmeter, start up our propane. Let's see what happens here. So there we go. I see a negative potential to zero. So no, so there are no gathered electrons here with the propane. All right, we have the alkaline electrolyzer hooked up now. See the hose there on the floor, comes up to here into our torch. You can hear the torch running. There. So let's see what we get. See there, we immediately get electrical potential there, gathering of electrons, a clear sign of. Ex electrically expanded water. See if we get in there just right. There we go.
Okay, so that's a sign of electrically expanded water or a sign that there is some electron gathering going on there. Let's unhook the alkaline system. We're gonna plug in the pin system. And let's do this again. Okay. So all the way up to 12 there. Let's see if I can get this just right. There we go. There it is. As you can see, the PEM gas, the PEM gas is actually registering on the voltmeter. So it's gathering electrons too. So does that mean that the Brown's gas made from the PEM systems has electrically expanded water? Or does that mean that they both have electrically expanded water, both the alkaline and the PEM systems? Or does it mean that when you put a membrane in between the anode and cathode that you can still make electrically expanded water? Or does it mean that electrically expanded water is a myth? I hope you like this video. We've got another couple videos coming. I think that you're going to like on uh, our series on what is Brown's gas. I think we did a good job using the Eagle Research data that's been given to us from the inventor of EXW. And now I think we're getting a better idea of what Brown's gas really is. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.